Hey, welcome back here to Great Day at 9A. So the creepy crawlies and jump scares from spooky season are fun. Sometimes you need something a little less spooky for the entire family. I don't know if this is it, though. <laughs> well, there is a great event that you can check out, and you'll have to discern whether this is for you and your family, but this is actually a historical experience, too. So we have Marcy Jones live at this place to tell us all about it. So Marcy, tell us, where are you? Hi there, good morning. East Granby is showing off. Take a look, you guys. Can you imagine in just probably even a week or two, the leaf peeping out here will be outrageous. You can see some of that gorgeous red starting to poke through. And I am here with my new friend, Morgan. Morgan, we are, where are we right now? We're kind of in the, is this the prison yard? The old prison yard? Yeah, this is the prison yard above ground. It's surrounded by a 1802 um, stone wall. Wow. And we're in here and visitors are able to explore this as well. Awesome. And what kind of things before we head on down to the dungeon? What kind of things can you see in this prison yard? Yeah, so above ground we have a lot of signage to read that talks about the history mm -hmm. as well as a guardhouse with a special exhibit and a lot of ruins that you can go in and amongst um, for people to explore. And, and it's kind of just choose your own adventure, right? Yeah, self-guided. I love it. Now, speaking of that, you guys, we had a little adventure just a little bit ago. We went down through the steps to, do we call it the dungeon? Yeah, this time of year we do, for sure. Of course, yes, everything's mind. spookier in October. All right, we're going to show you our little adventure. I can't believe we've made it down the stairs. We've opened the gate. I'm here with Morgan. Okay, so tell us what this place used to be used as, and now it's so cool with all the jack-o'-lantern. Thank you, thank you. This was um, the first charter copper mine in North America, okay. 1707. When they abandoned it, they turned it into a prison, 1773, and they housed incarcerated men down here. So that's the premise. Okay. In October, we like to honor the season. Uh, people want to be here for Halloween. We respect that, so we put 300 plus plus jack-o'-lanterns in the copper mine um, wow. as a way of uh, celebrating the season, but not making light of our dark history. We don't do skeletons and dead yeah. prisoners. We do jack-o'-lanterns. I love that. I love keeping it light and fun because, you know, some people might already be a little hesitant to go and visit an old prison. So tell us some cool facts about your history. Yeah, this was, um, like I said, the first state prison, mm -hmm. and it housed loyalists during the American Revolution. George Whoa. Washington sent men here. Um, it's really significant in terms of criminal justice in our early republic. Yeah. Um, and then it closed in 1827 and they moved the men to Weathersfield. There were some women incarcerated here, um, but the mine is the experience. You're feeling what they would yes. have felt. It's cold, it's wet, it's dark. This is where they were. Yeah, speaking of wet, especially since this, all this rain we just got, you know, you're, you're feeling a couple little drops, but honestly, it's all part of the experience, right? Yeah, we're hoping it's adding to the aesthetic. Yeah. We've never had um, a more wet fall. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's You're it's not alone in that, sister. It. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the actual logistics here. Like how, how wide is it? How many people can we have in here? How long does it usually take to go through? Yeah, so this is, um, your third, you start 35 feet below ground, you end up 75 feet, and Whoa. then come back up. It's a 100-yard okay. loop. Um, people can, we do it at your own pace. So usually we do 30-minute tours, but with this event, people are able to go quickly um, or slow. A lot of people are doing multiple laps. Mm -hmm. They do it once and are like, I have to see that again. It's yeah. hard to look at 300 plus jack-o'-lanterns. So we're letting 60 people down an hour, about 20 every uh, 15 minutes or so, and that's how we're navigating it. So advanced tickets are required. That helps us monitor the flow. Incredible, and before we pass it back, to us in the future. We have to talk a little bit about Halloween stuff. Sometimes parents are like, oh, is it too scary for this age group? What age group do you recommend for this? That's a great question. We're definitely advertising this as family friendly. We have some sound cool. this year, um, which is uh, adding to the aesthetic. Yeah. But otherwise, it's dark and kids, I mean, if kids are able to walk, it's pretty, uh, that's that's better. Um, so kids up till older adults, that's, okay. that's our vibe. And guys, I'm a scaredy cat, so and I'm totally fine here. So Everybody is good to go. Honestly, I know that we were talking about this and we were like, could it spook the kids? It's really not. It's actually really fun to see all of the different colors, all the different faces that they put out. They put a lot of work into this. So I think this, the scariest idea would be to be carrying your kids the whole time. So you just want to make sure that they're of walking age. Morgan, how can you get tickets to this fabulous event? Yeah, you can get tickets on Facebook, online, on our website. The tickets are through Eventbrite, so you can search it that way or even CT Visit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Morgan. Guys, we're going to be back in just a little bit. Sending All back right. to you.